So here we are at Billy. This is our camping field. We arrived yesterday. Didn't do any filming yesterday. Just wanted to sort of see everyone again, have a little walk around, see what everything's about. But today, we get the camera out and start going around. So it's Saturday morning and we're going to do the off-road course today and also do it tomorrow. So stick around. Here's us all bundled into our little corner of the camp. We were far away from anyone else so we could make a bit of noise and get the cocktails flowing. We spotted this one as we were walking into the show. The fact that this is in the car park and not in the show, there's a lot of variation there, which is cool. And it even had a gun on the back as well. Not only were there some cool trucks in the campsite, but there were some great camping setups too. After being locked down for two years and using the internet as a way to make friends, it's great to finally spot people you know from online, as well as Ashley's Landies. Some Camel Trophy tribute trucks here. There's a Disco One, pretty cool. I'm sure a lot of you out there watch Juice Motors. Sam's a great guy. They had a really nice stall selling lots of merch. And we actually got to meet the man himself. These shows are great for meeting new people and also the people you've been talking to online. So they're great places to market your brand and there's some really cool trade stands here. Some good food trucks, coffee. Everyone was here, big queues. A nice varied mix of vehicles. Love this BBC camera on top. Douglas Motors had a cool stand. They had Callum, Ollie, and Sam's trucks in there looking really cool. Managed to stick a bomb Callum's truck with some all train collector stickers in a really handy place. Callum displayed his old turbo that he blew up trying to get to the show. I'm not sure he did it. The amount of play on the road tour was absolutely ridiculous. Seeing Sam's truck in person was really cool. After being locked down for two years and seeing it online, it really is cool to see it in the flesh. The owner of Douglas Motors saw me sticker bombing Sam's car and actually almost came to tell me off. Me and Chris from Maori bumped into Ben Swede, so great to see him and his really clean truck. As well as Harry and Chloe from the Landy Expedition. Geth from Defender Valley was on the Land Trekker stand and basically sold me a fridge. Couldn't quite stretch it at the show, but that's definitely on my list for my camper rebuild, which is coming soon. I actually followed Geth for a long time before I even got Boris, and he was one of the inspirations to get Defender, so really cool to see it in person. Some absolutely inspiring wagons there. This pop top 110 with a fully kitted out interior was for sale for 33,000 and would be an absolutely amazing global tourer. If you're running around, you could do the main bulk of the show in a few hours, but you can stretch it to half a day and stretch it with meeting people to a whole day or even a weekend, which we did. But plenty to see in the car parks as well. After a bit of walking around and some food, it's definitely time to have a sit down. So here's our camp. Got some videos of it last night. Disco going crazy over there. So Margo there, Matt Small at the back with his disco roof tent on. Landy chap here, piece of rubbish, Boris there, somewhere wilder. It's our little camp. Lucy here flying the flag for the States. Shep. Shep's still in bed up there. It's about, it's about four o'clock in the afternoon and it's, he's still in bed. And uh, Ollie was here with his truck, but he's just gone into town. So that's our little campsite. Well, up quite late, I think we annoyed a few people, fortunately, but you can see it all here. Really cool. He's back, he returns. He's actually done the course. <laughs> You've actually done the course already. Of course he has. I've got a leak, we're going down. Is it good? How is it? Very is it? Yeah. Which one was it? Uh, River Run, River Course. Nice. As the day drew in, so did the people. We invited a lot of people around to our little stand to have a cocktail. We had some beers and meet us as well. Loved this little uh, convoy going around. Little is probably the wrong word, but this cool Swedish truck was awesome. We got our two fire pits out, a speaker and a cocktail bar. Everyone drew to us and we had a good time. We each had our own cocktail that related to our own truck, but unfortunately we ran out of booze on the first night. Is it possible to go to a camp without doing that? Generally just a great night. We had two nights of this and uh, it was absolutely brilliant to hang out with everyone ready for the next morning. So bright and early, going out for this course because yesterday I did it and there's a bit of a traffic jam. So I'm gonna head out with Chris from ORE and go again while the traffic is light and be able to do it all in about 30 minutes. 
we head out with Defender the Beast, Nat and Nicole behind us. They got a few shots for us and it was cool to convoy around the place. Some really cool water crossings and I gave them a bit of whack to show the audience a little bit of fun. Unfortunately, the long water crossing past the spectator area was uh, actually had a boulder in the middle apparently, so we were told to go around it one day. So that's why I'm right over to the right, otherwise I'd have gone the deep end. But the, the second day we managed to actually get through the middle and it was quite deep and still make it out with actually no problems really. Even though I saw a few people getting stuck in there. So it's good to know that Boris can sort of wade through the deeper stuff and uh, get out all right, which is good. A big bomb hole there, filled with mud. Still no diff locking, managed to get out there nice and easy. straight into the longest water crossing, which is the edge of the lake. You can see it's actually marked out where you have to go. Uh, we had to defend the beef behind us, and there's Margot right ahead of us, gave him a bit of space just in case anything happened. And actually, quite surprisingly, even though it's pretty deep, there's not much water comes into the foot wells, and there's pretty good traction. It's quite a sort of rocky base, even though it's quite muddy underneath. I think it's quite shingly there. And uh, all you need to do is just keep a bit of a bow wave up if you can. Um, try not to get the marshals too wet at the end and uh, just whip round. And hopefully, you know, maybe there's some people filming you and uh, you got some photography as well. There you go, the infamous mud run. Not too muddy when I did it the two times. It sort of had somehow dried out, but very rutted out and actually down to the ground rock because uh, there's a bit of a crunch as I went through and uh, you can hear the audience sort of reacting a little bit but Boris, you know, on 33 has managed to get out just fine here's the actually the first day we did it we went on the right line which is apparently the, the more difficult one and they said to gun it um, even though they said to gun it, the guy on the right there was telling me to slow down not quite sure why but um, yeah, managed to get out through there no towing needed and looking pretty somehow quite clean so all you need to do is go up here through the sort of sloppy bit and this takes you straight into another water crossing, which I had an idea to wash the truck on. Oh, you can sort of see it here. There's not much uh, way of telling how steep things are on the TV from the GoPro but yeah you're leaning over quite a bit on that one which is good and it's quite wet on the right hand side as well Margot ahead actually dealing with it as well which is fantastic this part's slightly more tame there's a few sort of rutted out U bends that you go through but it's cool to be amongst the sort of trees like this and also just uh, go through with your friends and get some photos when you're doing it but there are some cool sort of drop downs into some corners where there are some boggy bits that I did see some people either break down or get stuck in Again, you can't really see the steepness of it, but, you know, crawled out of there, trying to keep it slow, don't want to overdo it really, but uh, Boris is capable enough to just do it easy peasy really. You can see the Range Rover Classic stuck behind a Land Rover down there, not sure what happened, but um, got stuck or broke down. All in all, the off-road course is really cool to do. It's great when it's a bit wet and there's no traffic jam. So I'd recommend if you go, try and get there uh, every day if you're there uh, in the morning before 10. You can use your free pass to go around again. You're meant to do it on the same day. I think we managed to use it on the second, but generally a great course, good fun for beginners because you can sort of bypass the harder bits if you don't have a snorkel or uh, haven't got mud tires. So it's great for everyone really, but just nice to see loads of trucks out there and. Um, get some proper water crossings under the belt. And after our little escapade on the off-road course, we drove down from our little camp and lined up for a photo. And just like that, the weekend is over. I was gonna stay Sunday night now till Monday, but everyone's leaving and uh, yeah, it's been good since Friday. So good to get home, you know, tonight and um, Everyone else is going back as well, so we've got Frida and Leo, and then Shep's behind, and they uh, are just heading home. They're going to go to Wales, Scotland, and uh, I'm back down to Devon. Um, didn't film all that much in the end, you know, it's just nice to meet everyone, have a good time after not being to one of these shows, but hopefully you've enjoyed what you've seen, and 
yeah, I'll see you maybe at a show later in the year or a year after. Good, exciting weekend and I can't wait to come back next year. Cheers for watching guys.